And when the Lamb opened the seventh seal, silence, silence, covered the sky, 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 covered the sky. These are some preliminary notes on a a lecture and a dissertation that we would like to entitle, give a working title to. And the working title will be called Lucifer Decoded. Lucifer Decoded. <clears throat> now most know Lucifer as uh, the son of the morning and the particular place in, in scripture, at least according to the King James version of the Bible, that it can be found, if I'm correct, is Isaiah 14, um, chapter 14, verse 12. Chapter 14, verse 12. And we're just going from, just drafting out, we've been meditating on this idea for a moment, because so many people have this whole idea of Lucifer all twisted. And in fact, they begin to think of the so-called devil or Satan, or by one of the angelic names, or one of the other ministers of, of part of this conspiracy as being Lucifer. And many folks today consider themselves Luciferians when their proper name should be Satanists. They are opposers. But what are they in opposition to and why? This is why a lecture such as Lucifer Decoded, Lucifer Decoded is so vital and so important. Now, what we can hear behind us, or really above us, is hail. We're in that particular hail period, where it's hail falling. And this is just another sign of the times that these mysteries, these ancient mysteries of God and Christ and of scriptures and these dark parabolic sayings and um, these divine um, riddles are being uncoded and decoded and like they say inquiring minds want to know and many of us are beginning to inquire in this and a lot of things that were not known for ages are being known again as we are beginning to see and interpret the ancestral wisdom properly. So the forces of nature even must uh, more or less respond to this. And the Gnostics actually speak a lot about these forces of nature. Some even ascribe that the forces of nature can also be considered um, especially these um, <clears throat> natural forces that are terrible and violent and, and, and extremes to be demons or diamonis. And then this is also misinterpreted that needs to be touched on demons. And, or you would say, or you would write D-E-M-O-N and add the S for pluralization. But if you do a little bit of study on it, you'll find that the older form of demons was diamon, diamon, D-A-E-M-O-N, and then they would add E-S, and the diamones is a Greek way, if I'm correct, with saying uh, spirits, spirits. In other words, spirits, uh, you know, are basically diamones. So this is also very curious when you start to to cross-reference languages because, see, where many people are linguistically <clears throat> uh, disabled. Many of us in this English-speaking society are linguistically disabled, so therefore we are made to believe. In other words, in this make-believe, we're made to believe a lot of things that only if we have the opportunity to really open our eyes and study, we get to find out that we were lied to, uh, not intentionally perhaps by maybe a loved one or ones who also were made to believe. So they were made to believe and they made us to believe. This is why a lecture such as Lucifer Decoded is both timely and vital for us because many believe that 
the being that's known as the enemy, the adversary, Hebraically as Satan, or in the Greek, Diablos, the devil, the old time serpent and the dragon. They believe, well, this is Lucifer too. And that is a Roman Catholic or Mystery Babylon. That's a trick. That's a trick right there. In fact, we tell a lot of our disciples that you should not refer to the one they call Ha Shaitan or Satan as Lucifer. You should refer to Satan as Satan and those who believe in Satan and and defend and promote Satanistic or uh, worldly practices. You shouldn't refer to them. Don't refer to them as Luciferians. Refer to them by their true name, Satanist. They are Satanists. In fact, they flatter themselves to call themselves Lucifer. See, we have to decode it. Once it's decoded and it's put into its proper context when we get to the root word and the root meaning and the foundational ideas because if you ask people about lucifer what do you think lucifer is and who's lucifer and so forth they'll give you a whole bunch of different kind of opinions and and we call them guesstimates they'll say oh lucifer's this or that or lucifer's devil satan satan's lucifer that's what most of the the make-believers or the the misbelievers believe you see, and, and the, the Satanists, those who are Satanists, who may be hearing this, they know exactly what we're saying is true. They, if they choose to tell you the truth, but you have to understand in their order they can lie to you. Because that's also a part of being a good Satanist, that they'll lie to you. And then, but if they choose to tell you the truth, well really, if you choose to look it up and decode it for yourself. So we want to decode what Lucifer really means. And if we go to the reference material, okay, where does this word come from? Where is this word found? Like, how did it all begin? Where did it all start from? Where did they get this word from? We have to turn to the scripture, the very same scripture, I think, in Isaiah. Isaiah um, 14 and 12, where it speaks about uh, Lucifer, son of the morning. And it's in a particular prophecy that is, according to the Bible, the, the, the Bible laters, you understand, and the bibliographers of the Bible and the commentators of the Bible and the scholars of the Bible. They say, well, this is a particular place in Scripture where the prophet is speaking to the, what is it, the Prince of Tyre? The Prince of Tyre? Or the King of Tyre? I think it's the Prince of Time where he's speaking to the Tyrian official. Metaphorically, they say, well, this is a, it's prophetical and it's metaphorical. So he is being called son of the morning. But in the Bibles, it's called Lucifer, King James. Now, here's something that King James did that was very interesting concerning Lucifer. If you've done any study on this, Scripturally speaking, you'll find out that actually is uh, Hilal or Hilal Hashachar in the Hebrew, Hilal Hashachar in the Hebrew, which means um, Hilal, a name of a being, or Ha Ilil, Ha the Shachar of the Dawn. And they say basically this is a star, a particular star of the morning. A morning star. So when it's promptly translated, this Lucifer basically means from Latin. Lucifer is not a Hebrew term. Lucifer is not a Greek term. Lucifer is a Latin term. Now here's the interesting thing about the King James Bible. And this shows that the King James Bible is not as perfect as they would want to make us believe. Because we find it in the Old Testament. I don't think we even find it in the New Testament, but we find Lucifer in the Old Testament. And they said the Old Testament is based on the Texas Receptus, which is the the Masoretic Hebrew. So how is in the Masoretic Hebrew, even if they had to rely on the Septuagint Greek, how are they going to get in a prophetical book of the prophet this Latin terminology? If you look at a comparative biblical 
um, interpretations of the verse, you'll find that it's only in the Latin that we find the true origin of this terminology, Lucifer. In other words, Lucifer is Latin. Lucifer is a Latin term. It should not even be there in your translation of the Bible. But as it is, this one word, one time, got into the Old Testament King James translation of the Bible. And there's a scripture that says, um, like, uh, how much of a... A, a, like how, how, how much of a forest a little fire can burn you know like a little fire can almost and we see this almost daily in fact in the state of Jezreel in Israel there was a forest fire that burned and killed a whole bunch of people and they said it was started by some some so called Jew burning a, a bong a so called tobacco bong he was not burning herb marijuana or not, he was burning tobacco in a bong and the embers or whatever that he threw out into this it must have caught on a hold on the forest and it burned down the whole forest so a little fire you understand from this one little word that crept in to the King James translation of the Bible one little Latin word that really shouldn't have even been there if the King James translators were doing due diligence but because they did a they did a job and and we're grateful for the good parts but we have to point out the bad part because lucifer is definitely one of the bad parts not because of the fact that you've been made to believe all this nonsense concerning lucifer we're not defending lucifer or luciferians what we're saying is a false terminology lucifer is a false name and Luciferian is a false title, it's a deceptive title. They are Satan and Satanist. They are the devil and demons. So if we want to speak correctly, let's call them by their name. So when you call this being who is the adversary, when you call him the light bearer, you see what I'm saying? You don't even know what you're doing. And this is where Lucifer must be decoded and must be put into its proper context so you can overstand. And this is what we hope to do within this lecture and this dissertation that we're working on. It will be a surprise to certain people when we say that Lucifer or Satan, Satan, Yohun, is not Lucifer. Satan or the devil is not Lucifer. The devil was Satan before Satan became Satan, before the devil made himself a devil. He was a light bearer. He was that bright and morning star before iniquity and rebellion was found in him. This is what that whole portion of the prophecy is stating. So even the whole prophecy has been totally distorted because of that one Latin word. You see, and the Protestant reformers were supposed to be reforming the errors of Catholicism of Mystery Babylon. And this one word creeps in. And this now creates the so-called devil of counterfeit Christianity, of, of, of Babylonian mystery religion, of the Babylonian religion is now created and this one word now has been so misused ignorantly even by some of the scholars even by ones who supposedly studied this they have gotten it totally wrong this is why we must decode lucifer and the first step is what is in a name what does the word mean and this is why the webster's um, Collegiate Dictionary, the Oxford edition, is very good at a basic initiatory sort of a level, at a basic starting level. Not to look at the connotative one, two, three, four, or whatever amount of um, connotation they have, but to look in the etymological brackets. In other words, what is the etymology? 
for Lucifer states that the name means. And now according to the etymology, for Lucifer it means lux, which is light in Latin, and cipher, which means to bear or to carry. Well, a name that's similar to Lucifer is Christopher. What does Christopher mean? Christ bearer or Christ carrier, one who carries Christ, one who bears Christ. So like Christopher, Ofer means to carry. Luxifer, Luxifer means light bearer. Now another very curious thing that happens, and we just saw, I think it was an African movie, and they had, you know, this like Lucifer kind of scenario in it, and part of the song was talking about there's some music that the, the the singer was saying Lucifer like the prince of darkness but then look at the the contradiction of terms the contradiction of of, of terminologies Lucifer which is a Latin term and most people who speak the term don't even know the meaning of the name and don't even speak Latin. Now, why in the world are you going to call someone who was fired from their job by their former title? For example, if somebody was, um, say, a priest, right? Say if there was a priest, say, in a, some church, and they were found to be child abusing, abusing children. You know, like the altar boys, like what goes on into the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. You know, this is sickening, but still it's a, it's a now story. And a priest gets accused, even admits that, yes, they did it, and, and it's beyond any shadow of a doubt. It's not an accusation, but it's a proven, there's proven guilt. And they get fired, fired from the position. They get defrocked. You understand? They get cast out, sent out into the world. Why in the world are you still going to refer to them as a priest? You know what I mean? In other words, they, they got demoted from that title. See, so Lucifer actually was a title when that being who made themselves a Satan adversary, an opposer, a slanderer and a liar, a diablos and a devil, why are you going to refer to that being or that individual person by the former title which they got fired from, which they got demoted from? And this is one of the, the big deceptions that really needs to be decoded, especially by our brothers, you understand, especially by the brotherhood of the King of Kings and His Christ. And the disciples, you really need to understand this. So we say we're going to use this as a, as a, as an objective lesson, and this is a very important objective lesson because you can learn so much from studying this and from decoding what's in the name, especially Lucifer and the misuse of Lucifer. Because here's where the confusion now comes in: is that Lucifer in meaning means bright and morning star, but then. If you're a Christian, who is the bright and morning star? It is Jesus Christ, falsely called Jesus, the foreign pronunciation. But more properly, Jesus or Jesus, Iusu, or Yehoshua HaMushi, according to the Hebrew. So he is the bright and morning star. You understand what's going on here? But what they do is they insert a Latin. A Latin. Remember the mark of the beast also refers to a Latin speaking man. Or a Latin. An Afarengi. Or Afarenj. A Ferengi. You understand? A foreigner. A Westerner. A European. A white man. That's what the terminology of Roman. So they insert this Roman Catholic term that is only found in the Roman Catholic or Vulgate, the Vulgar Bible. That's what they actually call it. When they call it Vulgate, and it's to refer to the Vulgar, the Vulgar Bible. It's vulgar. You know and, and what is vulgar? They say, don't use profanity. You know, don't use bad language. That's vulgar. It's a rude. Something is wrong with it. It's not proper. It's not polite. Therefore, it is not proper 
or spiritually polite to refer to Satan, to refer to Diablos as Lucifer because it is not his title anymore. He was demoted from that title. He was fired from his job. But the Luciferians, so-called, still seek to call him Lucifer and build up this big make-believe around what he formerly was. It's like somebody lose their job and they still are trying to make people believe and some people believe that they still have a right to that position that they fell from. This is where the whole Satanist conspiracy, this is the crux or the cross of the Satanist conspiracy. This is the cross that they're crucified on. You understand? I am crucified to the world, as Hawari Paulo says, and the world, conversely and vis-a-vis, -vis, is crucified to me. So, much more to come on this. In the person of... Kadamawi, Kadamawi, Mr. The whom praises do what help, 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 help. And when the Lamb opened the seventh seal, silence, silence covered the sky, covered the sky, covered the sky, covered the sky.